So now let's look at a new type of graph called a weighted graph. So remember that in a graph like this, we have seen that a systematic way to explore this graph is breadth first search. And breadth first search explores this graph level by level. And therefore, because it does it level by level, it discovers the vertices reachable from the starting vertex at successively longer distances. And therefore, the BFS computes the shortest path in terms of number of edges to every reachable vertex. Now, in practice, we often assign some values to the edges. Right? So if you look at, a, for example, a road map, then you might see some numbers against each section of road representing the length of the road. Similarly, if you look at, say, a railway map or an airline map, you might see the time it takes to do a segment of a journey, or it could be the distance, or it could be even the cost. You know, how much does this ticket cost? So these numbers indicate some more abstract information about the length of an edge than just the fact that I take one edge. So it's not enough for me to say that I took two flights. I need to know how long these flights are. So if I take a hopping flight in a short distance, say I go from Chennai to Bangalore to Mangalore, right? it is not the same as taking a hopping flight which takes me from Chennai to Delhi to San Francisco. right? So the two are still two length travels, but one is enormously longer than the other in time. So this is the kind of information that we want. right? So we want to take this kind of a weighted graph. So what is a weighted graph formally? A weighted graph is just a graph. So we have a set of vertices, we have a set of edges, but we have weights. So weight formally is a function, right? A function which takes every edge that is present in the graph and assigns it some real number, right? So notice that we are not claiming at this moment that the real number is positive or negative. We will discuss what negative weights will mean, but most of the interesting things that we can think of, the weights will be zero or more. Right? So we can think of a zero cost edge as sometimes a cost, an edge which is not there has a zero cost edge. Okay? Or sometimes it may be there, but typically in any reasonable scenario, weights are positive. But we will see a situation where weights could actually be negative and make sense. So the first thing is we have to, we are going to work with these graphs. And we have an adjacency matrix way of working with a graph in general, which records the presence of an edge. So how do we record a weighted graph? So what is our representation of weighted graphs? Right? So in adjacency matrix, what we can do is that whenever we normally put a 1 saying there is an edge, instead of the 1, we can put the weight. Right? So assuming that there are no 0 weights, then wherever there is a 0, there is no edge. Wherever there is a 1, there is a weight. So if you look at this graph here, for instance, if I look at the edge, for instance, 4 to 5, then I look at the entry 4, 5, and now I have a 50 there rather than just a 1. Right? So there's a very simple way to represent weighted graphs. Just take the adjacency matrix and at each entry i comma j, put the weight of the edge i comma j. And if there is no edge or if the weight is 0, put a 0. So our interest is initially to compute shortest paths in such graphs. So we have these weighted graphs right, where we have some edge weights between edges and we want to find the shortest path. So what is the shortest path now? For us, the shortest path will be the sum of the weights. So for example, if I take this path, Right? then the weight of that path, the length of that path is 80 plus 70, 150. Right? If I take this path, for instance, the length of that path is 60. Right? More interestingly, if I take this path, the length of that path is 15, whereas the direct path from here to here is just is 50. Right? So going from 4 to 5 via 6 is actually shorter than going from 4 to 5. Right? So in general, this is the situation that in a weighted graph, the weighted shortest path does not need to have the minimum number of edges in the unweighted sense. So if I look at the very beginning of this graph from 0, right, I can go from 0 to 2 in one step. But then I pay a cost of 80. Whereas if I go from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2, so I take two steps, then actually I get a cost which is 10 plus 6, which is much less, 16. So the shortest path from 0 to 2 is actually via 1, an indirect path. So now, what are we going to try and solve with these weighted graphs? Well, there are more than one type of shortest path problem. So the first type of shortest path problem is one where we start at a fixed vertex and we want to find out the distance to every other vertex. So this is called the single source shortest path problem. So we would start at a fixed vertex and find out how long it is from this vertex to every other vertex. Now, why is this an interesting problem? Well, there are many applications where this is interesting. For instance, suppose you are a manufacturer, right? So you have a factory and you make things, and now you have to take things from your factory, your finished products, and distribute them to the shops where they are sold, the retail outlets. So you have a single source, your factory, 
and then you have to find the most efficient way so the shortest path in terms of whatever you're measuring the cost of traveling or the time it takes to travel or the distance it takes to travel whatever is the cost that you want to count towards the transportation cost you would like to find the shortest transportation cost from your factory to every one of your retail outlets so this is a single source shortest path to every other vertex alternatively for instance you could be a courier company so what happens in a courier company is that they have these flights between cities right so all the packages which go to say delhi come from different destinations and they land in delhi and they go to a centralized clearing facility in delhi so overnight you might have flights coming from calcutta from bombay from bangalore from chennai and all that all this information all these packages come to delhi and now they have to deliver them out so the the starting point right the distribution center where all these things are initially brought in from the airport or air cargo wherever they come that is a single source and now they have to now find the most efficient way to distribute it to all the destinations where these packages have to be so the single source shortest path problem has a number of applications and therefore it's an interesting version to solve on the other hand sometimes we want to know something about every pair now of course you could take the single source thing and start from every vertex and find every other vertex distance and then you'll get all pairs but generally there may be a better way to find the distance between all pairs so for every i and every j we want to find out the shortest distance from i to j so the single source says fix some starting point say fix vertex 7 right and from 7 what is the shortest distance to everything now this says for every i and j so not only from 7 to j i want to know from 9 to j from 11 to j from 7 to 11 from 9 to 11 and so on Right? and this is the kind of thing typically that say if you are uh, managing a, a booking site right and somebody says i want to go from city a to city b then you have to be able to provide in terms of the cost or time or some metric the cheapest way to go from a to b right so somebody might say that i want to reach there as fast as possible so what is the shortest flight or some people might say i want the cheapest ticket right so based on whatever is the cost that you are associating what then you will have to find and then you need to be able to do this for any pair because you have customers who can be going from anywhere to anywhere right so this is the all pair shortest path problem so these are the two problems that we will initially look at in the context of weighted graphs single source shortest paths and all pair shortest paths now at the beginning i alluded to the fact that we have this function right so we said that we have this function which takes every edge and gives us an arbitrary number and in principle there's nothing to prevent this number this weight of an edge from being negative right so what if i'm thinking of as cost what would be a reasonable scenario where i could have negative edge weights right so now imagine that you are an uber driver or an ola driver or any one of these cab companies right so you have a certain num- amount of hours when you uh drive your cab and at a certain point you want to start heading home and reach home roughly when you finish your work rather than eventually traveling across the entire city empty right so this is all i mean many of us in days when uh, we have taken ubers have found that towards the end of the day for example it's little difficult sometimes to get long distance things if the driver is not living in that direction and right? they will say no 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 sorry i'm going in the opposite direction because i'm heading home So here is a taxi driver trying to head home at the end of the day. So maybe he has an hour of service left and he wants to try and optimize where he lands up at the end of this hour so he has a minimum amount of time to travel home. So now he has to take a choice, right? So he has to start looking for customers maybe, right? So if he takes a road which has very few customers, then he will be losing money, right? So there will be a cost that he is paying. So that is a positive cost. On the other hand, if you travel on a road with many customers then you're likely to find somebody who will uh, hail you for a ride you might get a you might get a, a call so therefore you will earn money so you have a negative cost right so where you are not taking customers you are paying for driving the car you are paying a petrol cost and other costs and therefore you are losing money so that's a positive cost where you are gaining money where you are earning money it's a negative cost and you want to obviously get more money so you want to reduce the cost you want to make the negatives more than the positive so you want to find actually a route towards home which minimizes the cost right so this is one example where negative edge weights make sense now what happens to our shortest path problem in the presence of negative edge weights so the problem is not so much with negative edge weights but negative cycles so supposing i have somewhere in my graph right a cycle which has something like minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 and plus 2 for example right if i go around the cycle 
then what do I do? I add up the weight. So I get minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, right? Minus 1 plus, so maybe, maybe I should maybe make this also plus 1. So minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So the total weight of the cycle is minus 1. In other words, if I go around the cycle once, I reduce my cost by 1, right? So if I'm supposing I'm going from A to B, right? So there could be some arbitrary weights here, W1 and W2. So I do W1 plus W2 to go from here to there. But if I want to reduce it, I go around the cycle uselessly once and I get minus 1. I go around it again and I get minus 2. I go around it again and I get minus 3. So I can go around the cycle as many times as I want, right? And keep reducing my cost. I can make it as negative as I want and it doesn't make sense, right? Because I mean, we are actually taking longer and longer paths, but because the cycle has a negative cost, we are able to do this. So this is clearly something which is, uh, which makes the problem undefined, right? So if we have a negative cycle, we can just go round and round that cycle and then there are no shortest paths anymore on anything which goes past that cycle. Because anytime I want to reduce the cost, just go around the cycle once. But if I don't have negative cycles, then it's fine, right? So in a graph has negative cycles, shortest paths are not defined. But if you, if you have negative edges, you might have some edges which are negative, but you don't have negative cycles, right? Then it's fine. So if you have negative edges but no negative cycles, you can still do shortest paths, but you have to then be careful that your algorithm doesn't depend on the edges being positive. To summarize, we have looked at what's called a weighted graph. So in a weighted graph, we attach to every edge a cost, a number, okay, which we call the weight. And these can be described for us in our adjacency matrix by entering the cost or the weight of every edge in place of a one. So then once we have these edge weights, then we can measure the length of a path in terms of the weight. So not just how many steps I take in terms of edges, but what is the total sum of the weights across these edges. And so now I get a new notion of shortest path, which is probably more natural from the way we think about graphs representing sort of spatial things at least. So we get the sum of all the edges that we traverse, but the weights of the sums, not just the number of edges, right? And we saw that this now will give us something which is not necessarily the same as the shortest path in terms of number of edges. We could have a shorter path which has a longer, higher cost as compared to a longer path. Okay? So we said that there are two types of shortest path problems, which at least two types which we will find interesting. One is the single source path where we start at a fixed vertex and we want to find out where we can, how fast we can go to every other vertex. So this is for example the delivery problem for a courier company. right? Or we have the all pairs problem, which is typically the type of problem that you need to solve if you run a travel agency, right? You need to be able to tell somebody from anywhere to anywhere, what is the best way to go. And finally, we looked at this peculiar problem of negative edge weight. So we gave a justification that there can be reasonable situations which are modeled by negative edge weights. And if we still want to be able to compute shortest paths in the presence of negative edge weights, what we need to ensure is that there are no negative cycles. Because if we have negative cycles, then the shortest path is not defined. But we don't have negative cycles, even if we have negative edge weights, we can hope to find shortest paths.